guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Uh, welcome back. Uh, here we are three days later. And now it's time to bring the crew home, the crew of Inspiration 4. They will be coming home tonight and splashing down in the ocean after their three day mission out to uh, outer space to see the see the cosmos. It was kind of awesome. So uh, they are uh, they will be coming back. Uh, this evening here, so we're about an hour and 15 minutes away from uh, Splashdown. So our T-minus countdown here up in the top left corner is counting down to Splashdown. It's, uh, it may not be exact, it's counting down to the minute of Splashdown. I don't have the exact second of Splashdown. Not to mention that that's gonna kind of, that'll be a little bit flexible as we uh, uh, as we get into things. So uh, I'm sure SpaceX probably knows the exact second, but they haven't exactly shared that with us. So uh, we're, it's close enough, all right? It's close enough. Uh, but anyway, so at this point, the crew has, has uh, put their suits back on. Uh, they have now, or they should have, right before we went uh, live here, they should have secured the hatch. I haven't actually seen any updates as to whether or not the hatch has been secured, but assume that it is that it is secure and good to go. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna see, well, the next thing we'll see is SpaceX is gonna go live uh, about an hour prior to to Splashdown. So in about uh, 14, 15 minutes, somewhere in there, we should see SpaceX go live. Uh, but the next big event for the crew is gonna be the trunk jettison. So remember our, uh, our Crew Dragon capsule has uh, a capsule up top and then the trunk in the back. The trunk, uh, the, the the trunk is is junk. There's junk in the trunk. It's the that's it, going away. It's going to be jettisoned. Um, and then the uh, the capsule is the only part that is going to come back. I mean, the trunk will eventually. Uh, the, the trunk is eventually going to deorbit. It's going to deorbit. Right. It, it will uh, burn up in the atmosphere. It may stay up there for a little while because um, they actually do the deorbit burn after trunk jettison. Um, so uh, they will they'll jettison the trunk. It'll still be in a, a relatively stable orbit, you know, for a little while at least. It is still in a pretty low orbit, so eventually it is going it's gonna to deorbit. Right, it's going to deorbit and come and burn up in the atmosphere, and uh, and, and we don't get that back. Uh, but we do get the crew back and the capsule, and so just that top portion, the capsule portion, is what's going to going to come back. So that's the next big event that we're looking forward to here is going to be uh, the the junk trunk being <laughs> being jettisoned. Uh, and then uh, after, shortly after that, things start to happen pretty quickly after that. So we get the the jettison of the the trunk and then uh, we get the deorbit burn. It's going to deorbitate. And then uh, that burn uh, that burn lasts like uh, I think it's about 15 minutes is what that burn's going to last. And and that that takes us to about uh, 35 minutes prior to splashdown. Uh, then we get uh, the, after the after the deorbit burn, it's gonna deorbitate. Uh, they will close the nose cone. Reason why is uh, the speaking of nose, my, my nose is itchy. <laughs> uh, the they're gonna close the nose cone because they use the thrusters in the nose of the capsule to do that deorbitate. To do the deorbitate, the deorbit. They're using the thrusters in the nose cone. And so one of the things that's kind of weird for the crew is that that sensation, right? It's you're basically slamming on the brakes. And so they're in their seats facing the nose and they're slowing down. So they're gonna be they're gonna be pushed forward in their seats there with the acceleration going back through them. So for 15 minutes, they're strapped in their seats being pushed forward and have to sit that way for 15 minutes. Kind of a weird, uh, a weird feeling there. So, anyways, after the deorbit burn, they're gonna close the nose, the the nose cone. Then we get uh, they it kind of reorients the the capsule into uh, the entry attitude. We're gonna get a communication blackout. If you've seen things like uh, Apollo, the Apollo 13 movie, where they get that communication blackout, we still got that. That's still around. Um, so we're gonna get a communication blackout for a few minutes, where uh, we won't get any, we won't hear anything from the crew uh, and that's as you're coming back you get a whole bunch of uh, you're basically plasma that forms oh, probably should have turned that off who is it what do you want I'm busy you get plasma that forms around the capsule and that uh, prevents communications from being able to to go down back to the ground stations um, 
So we're going to have that communication blackout. They come out. They're going to continue to free fall for a little while. Then we'll get the drogue parachutes out. The main parachutes out. Bing, bang, boom in the water. And then uh, about an hour after splashdown is when they're going to take the crew out of the, the capsule. At least that's kind of the target goal. We've seen some go longer. We've seen some go. The, I think the last crewed mission for NASA went a little bit shorter, actually. Uh, so it'll be kind of up in the air. We'll have to see what that what that timing is. But but that's the plan for the day, right? Sound sound about a, a sounds like a decent plan. OK, <laughs> how many people <laughs> I'm just seeing the comments. How many people thought their phone was going off when my phone went off? <laughs> how many don't don't lie. How many of you checked your phone when my phone went off? <laughs> You're watching on your phones and you went, oh, I got a notification. What is it? Y'all are addicted to your phones is what it is. Don't lie. We all are. <laughs> Uh, let's see. SpaceX live stream just started, says Raj. Uh, okay, yep. So they're still on the intro card. We're going to kind of... We'll let this hang out for a second, and we'll switch over to it in a bit. Uh, one thing... Hey, Anonymous, part of our Anonymous army. Anonymous has got it, gotten it kicked off. Uh, one thing we should mention here today, and we set it up the last time, is, uh, again, this, this live stream has an easy donate button if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on one of our simulcast locations like Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch. Uh, it's not there. You got to go to the YouTube one. But on YouTube, made it very easy for you to donate to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. That's what the Inspiration4 mission is all about, is trying to raise funds for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. And uh, the other day, you guys just absolutely blew me away because I don't... I'm not sure uh, how many of you saw my my update after the fact, but we went to check. I figured out how to check how much we raised just here on our channel. So if you look at the pinned comment at the top of YouTube, total from all the YouTube creators, we, they raised about uh, half a million dollars, five hundred and eleven thousand dollars. A lot of that, there's the main uh, SpaceX stream, the the great people over at NASA Space Flights raising a ton of money, but us here, we also raised five thousand dollars the other day. Just you guys, $5,000 we raised here on, on our live stream, which was amazing. Just blew me out of the, out of the, I don't know. I was speechless. I'm still speechless. Uh, it was, I, I thought maybe we raised like 500 bucks or something like that, but $5,000 you all donated the other day to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is just amazing. You guys are all amazing. So thank you to everybody that donated the other day. And we set it up again the, uh, today. May, let's try to keep the train going. If we can, consider donating to directly to St. Jude. None of it comes to me. None of it comes to Overlook Horizon. YouTube doesn't even take a cut. It all goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. It's amazing. It's uh, Childhood cancer, I think, is something we can all agree, something we need to get rid of. So... Consider, consider donating. And right off the bat, Anonymous, Anonymous donated $100. Lobster Fest is on. $100 right off the bat to St. Jude. I, that's, that is amazing. Super generous. Thank you, Anonymous. Anonymous, uh, that's part of our Anonymous army. Anonymous from the Anonymous army. 100. Lobster Fest is on. $100. That's amazing. Uh, saw another anonymous, $20. Thank you so much. We got, there. look at, they're rolling in already. Anonymous, 20 pounds. Josh Mayfield, $20. Cheryl Johnson, five bucks to St. Jude's. It's awesome. You guys are absolutely amazing. So we got, I would donate more, but my cash, my cash drawer is full. <laughs> right, well, I, I started reading the beginning of the comment. I was going to say, you know, if your financial situation doesn't, you know, means you can't donate, no big deal. Nobody's going to hold it against you. I'm never going to judge anybody for trying to save some money. But if you can, if you're going to, five bucks even, it goes a long way. Like I said the other day, you skip your pumpkin spice latte one time, give it to St. Jude instead. That would be, that would be amazing. Uh, the other comment, the other half of the comment though, because your cash drawer is full. <laughs> We talked the other day that if you have cash, you can just put it you put it in the drawer in your computer tower. It says CD next to it, which stands for cash drawer. Uh, don't, I don't know who, he, who needs to hear this, but don't do that. <laughs> ah. OK, let's talk about uh, let's talk about a couple things before SpaceX goes 
goes live. So right now, let's see if we can switch over. Yeah, okay. Right now, this is the track of Inspiration 4. This is kind of the track that they're on right now. We are one hour away from touchdown. I'm not sure how up to date this TLE is. So uh, it's possible that it could have changed within the last couple hours as they were moving things around and getting getting uh, in the proper orientation. We uh, we also have, so this says on the other, other side of the world, but we also have, uh, we couldn't find it the other day, but SpaceX on their website has the Dragon Tracker, which I think is still up. Is this it? Yeah, here's the Dragon Tracker. Can we, we can move this around? No, I can't move it around. I thought I could move it around. Refresh, move it around. There it goes. I, I knew I could move it around. So yeah, they should be, they're about in the same, they're both, they're both correct here. So here's Dragon over on the far side, flying over India right now, going to uh, head over here to the other side of the planet and uh, splash down off the coast of Florida here. So uh, somebody said SpaceX is live, not on the loading screen. Uh, mine is still on the loading screen. Oh, they're doing uh, an intro. Yeah, so we'll switch over to that here in just a minute. I'm just getting, uh, I want to get everybody up to date on what we've got going on. So uh, so that's where the Crew Dragon capsule is right now. Uh, timeline we talked about a little while ago, which uh, we've, we're on track for a 7.06 p.m. Eastern time landing and uh, or splashdown rather. And that's the that's the plan for to for today. Uh, there are there were a couple of splashdown sites. I believe we're still we're still targeting the primary splashdown site. Unless somebody's seen any different, uh, the primary splashdown site would be right here. This little purple. Actually, here we can even uh, can we get rid of these? No, I can't get rid of them. Primary splashdown site is right here. Uh, this purple purple area. There's other. These are the backup recovery sites here. So you got one by Daytona, one up here by Jacksonville. You got Tampa, one by Tallahassee, Gainesville in between here, Panama City and Pensacola. Uh, but I believe we're still targeting the primary. Did anybody see any different? I have not. So let's see, let's get to, uh, let's get the SpaceX stream up here and We'll switch it over to here so you all can see what's happening. Uh, we'll listen into them in a minute. Uh, at the moment, though, I'm going to continue. Uh, I'm going to continue talking until we really get some visuals that we want to see here. But we also, again, want to acknowledge. We're probably going to do this a couple of times, but I again want to acknowledge uh, anybody that's donated to St. Jude because I think it's amazingly generous if you're doing that. So we got some uh, a couple more anonymous. Uh, Anonymouses from our Anonymous Army donating 20 bucks each. Josh Mate, uh, well, we said Josh Mayfield. I mean, let's see, we passed that one. Another Anonymous $10 donation. Phil, Phil Flamond. Phil Flamond here. Lobster Fest is on. Phil's got a $100 donation to St. Jude. Phil, that is incredibly generous. Lobster Fest is on. Thank you, Phil, for your $100 donation to St. Jude. Anonymous, another Anonymous. David Turwillick. Terwilliger, hope I said that right. Twenty dollars to St. Jude. Donna Svitak. Donna S. Donna Svitak. Donna, thanks for the donation to St. Jude. And James Kimmon. Kimmons snuck one in here before I right before I moved on. Thanks, James. All right, let's grab a couple of questions here, other than the uh, the donations as well. What type of things can prevent them from landing in that? in that area and landing somewhere somewhere near Ireland. Uh, generally, so landing near Ireland is is an abort scenario. Uh, these are not, uh, we're, at, at this point, the landing zone is selected. Uh, so uh, there isn't really any any changing it at this point. The landing zone is selected. Uh, they, the things that can change the landing zone to maybe one of these alter, alternate landing zones is generally gonna be things like weather. If the, the, the surface level winds were no good, because remember you're gonna be under parachute. You don't want strong surface level winds that can push the parachute around or tip it over when it, you know, as it's landing or cause a lot of horizontal drift. 
surface level winds can do that. Um, you can also get uh, you know high sea conditions, storms in the area, uh, any of that kind of thing can change the land. They may select an alternate landing location, but these are all the landing locations for Crew Dragon Capsule uh, uh, during recovery. So they have a bunch of recovery locations to choose from. Uh, the Ireland one that you're probably talking about is an abort scenario. So during ascent, as they travel up the ascent corridor, one of the last abort modes could put them in a uh, in a landing near Ireland. And that's really, it's a, it's very, it would be very rare and statistically very low because there is a very small window in which that abort mode is activated. So the nice thing about Dragon is it does have abort modes all the way up to orbit, uh, but those abort modes get smaller and smaller and smaller based on how fast the vehicle is going. So the faster that vehicle goes, uh, by the time you get to that last abort mode, that that abort mode is just is teeny tiny. It's a very small a very small window of opportunity where that that abort mode could potentially be activated. Uh, let's see. We'll go back to here while we're uh, taking some questions. At what time Pacific are they going to land? One hour from now. Exactly one hour from now. So if you're in the Pacific, com compute that. <laughs> Just add one hour. <laughs> it's in the top left corner. Uh, what's what's that? What well, John's going to go dark here? What's what are the worst things other than death that could happen upon landing? What type of difficulty can I get into when they splash down? Well, there are, you know, so there's a bunch of things. A lot of people think that, you know, once it's in the water that they're good to go. We saw on like the Demo 2 mission, there was a uh, monomethyl hydrazine uh, remnants still surrounding the capsule, which is toxic, uh, toxic to the recovery crews, toxic to the crew in the capsule. Um, so that's a concern that they have to watch out for. They're going to check that when it lands in the water. Um, you have, And then all during the descent, there's a ton of things that can that can be dangerous. Uh, that uh, they're going to watch out for. Obviously, you've got to enter the atmosphere in the right orientation, remain in control. Uh, there are thruster firings that kind of keep that in control. Uh, so that's going to be, you know, that's something that's important. You have to have both drogues come out. Um, they, they can survive with one drogue, but you want both to come out. Same thing with parachutes. You want all four parachutes to come out. It can survive with just one, but it's going to be a hard landing. Um, Oh, there's our crew. But yeah, obviously we don't want, we don't want them to be without a parachute. That would be no good. Let's see, always have many backup plans that computation, computation matter. Yeah, there are lots of backup processes, which is good news. I gotta change this music. It's a little, the music is a little too bumping, but I can't find my usual playlist that I use. It's a, uh, it was missing from my missing from my list. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, it's gone. Let's we'll try this playlist. Maybe this is better. A little more chill. I was getting a little too amped up. Are they watching Netflix on the <laughs> or they're are you watching a movie? Is he watching a movie right now? What's happening? I think he's watching a movie. What movie is that? Ooh, am I going to get a copyright strike? <laughs> wait, wait, don't, don't show it. I don't want a copyright strike from you showing a movie. <laughs> I'm watching space balls on there. Don't copyright strike me for that. Oh, no. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's see. Where? All right, here we go. We got our first bathroom question. Where, where do they use the bathroom? Everybody asks. I have a. I do have an entire video about how the bathroom works on the Crew Dragon capsule. Check that out. Um, it's it's in the ceiling. There's a bathroom. They can they can number one. They can number two. It's there. They can do it. It's you know a little less private than maybe at home, but it's there. They can do it. How many sunrises and sunsets did they experience on the trip? I think we computed it the other day and they were going to make like 48-ish trips, something like that. I think it was Graham or our moderator Graham maybe uh, came up with that that uh, number. 
I don't know what the official number of, of orbits is that they ended up with. I heard actor Tom Cruise and a film director to fly on a future SpaceX flight to do filming. Do you know when this is? Uh, yes, they are. And I think that's, isn't it part of the Axiom mission that's coming up next year? I believe. And I think they actually talked to the Inspiration4 crew uh, just a, a day ago or so um, to get their experiences, to find out what they, uh, what, what they went through. So... All right, let's turn up SpaceX for a little bit. Let's listen in while I read some comments. At about 4.06 p.m. Pacific time today. And for return, we'll be looking at a number of weather items. Um, some of the obvious ones that we do uh, take into account is that there's no rain um, or chance of lightning in the recovery zone, both for the safety of the crew inside the capsule, but also the recovery teams on the water. Um, we're also looking for wind speeds less than 15 feet per second or about 10 miles per hour relatively calm seas so that we can safely execute recovery operations, which includes landing a helicopter on the recovery ship to fly Jared, Haley, Cyan, and Chris back to Florida. Yeah, and if you've been following along since Wednesday, we had mentioned that uh, for this particular mission, weather was of uh, particular uh, importance. Um, uh, the Inspiration4 crew did not go for an extended duration to the International Space Station. They were orbiting the Earth uh, for the duration of their mission. So we had to make sure that weather was good on ascent uh, at liftoff and also for splashdown today. But uh, as Jesse mentioned, um, looks like we have some pretty good visibility. The waves are not choppy. Um, and so things are looking great for an on-time splashdown uh, later on today. And for these operations, SpaceX closely coordinates with the United States Coast Guard to establish a safety zone to ensure public safety and for the safety of those involved in the recovery operations, as well as the crew on board the returning spacecraft. Multiple notices are issued to the Mariners in advance and during recovery operations, and Coast Guard patrol boats are deployed to discourage boaters from entering the splashdown zones. Oh, the now, boaters. We want to stress to the public <laughs> the need to respect the safety zone. Recovering a spacecraft from the water is a hazardous operation, and any other boats interfering increases risk to the astronauts in the capsule, the teams working to recover them from the water, and the safety of those that come too close. So for the safety of our crew and for your safety, we recommend that you sit back and watch as we'll be bringing you the best possible views of our astronauts' homecoming. Dragon, nominal trunk jettison. And copy that, SpaceX. We definitely felt it. <laughs> Definitely felt it. All right, the trunk is gone. So it looks like we had junk. successful call separation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Again, that um, uh, detaches the umbilical that routes power and fluids to from the trunk to Dragon. So now Dragon has also separated its trunk successfully. And so that does a couple of things for us. Um, when we re-enter and the parachutes deploy, we want to make sure that there is as little mass as possible. It gives the parachutes a bit easier time to um, decelerate the, the vehicle. The second thing it does is um, there are some uh, heat uh, some heat shields and some uh, pika tiles uh, that we'll talk about a little bit later on uh, and their job is to protect the capsule and the crew from all of the heat that's being generated during re-entry jettisoning the the trunk exposes that heat tile and um, uh, allows it to face forward uh, during re-entry yeah, and again, now the Dragon capsule is on battery power. Um, so the trunk typically provides uh, power while they're in orbit. Um, now that we no longer have the trunk, um, it, it is working on battery power and it will have enough battery power um, and then some to uh, make its way back home to Earth. So up next, we have the deorbit burn. This is the last time that... So, so we've got the, the trunk is gone, uh, which the trunk has a whole bunch of solar panels on it, provides a lot of power. Uh, for the capsule, which is what they ju were just talking about there with the capsule now being on battery power. So the capsule has its own batteries on board. And uh, that's what's going to power the capsule down to the ground for a limited period of time. Um, but they had mentioned, they talked about the weather a little bit, and because it's not going on this extended mission, uh, they had to consider weather for launch, for abort scenarios, and also landing all at launch time. So they had to make sure, like, it was a, a it's kind of, impressive that it actually launched on the first try and that weather didn't didn't actually play play a factor here so um so hopefully uh things are 
well, things have to be good now because they've jettisoned the trunk and uh, now it has to come home. So. Why do they wait an hour before they get the crew out of the capsule, says Scott. So that's a good question. Uh, some of it is just timing, right? So you got to get a recovery crew that actually goes out there. They have to secure the parachutes. They have to get the capsule up on the ship. The recovery crew has got to hook it all up to the hoist. Get it up there. That takes a little bit of time to do all that. Um, and then on top of that, one of the biggest things that they're, that they're going to make sure and this is where you can get a little bit of flexible time there during the actual recovery process is they want to make sure that there is no monomethylhydrazine um, fumes or anything. So there there are thrusters that fire during the reentry process uh, to try to keep the, the spacecraft oriented in the correct directions. Uh, and they want to make sure that there are none of those fumes that are still in the area because they are very, very toxic to humans. Um, so they're going to take readings on that. Sometimes they have to just wait for that to dissipate, which we saw in the DM2 mission with, with uh, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley. Um, so it's, it's all just the safety factor. And at this point, like, what's, what's a one-hour wait? It's not, a, it's not really a big deal. So, um, I mean, for us that are all excited to see them, we get impatient, but it's it's a it's worth the wait. Let's let's see what other comments uh, we can find here. Oh, we talked about they had mentioned all the boats. It kind of sounded like they were a little concerned with the boats. Hopefully, that's not going to be an issue today. Um, but if you remember from the demo two mission. Uh, there were a whole bunch of recreational boaters that met the recovery crews at the splashdown site, uh, which is a big problem. Again, I just mentioned that very, very those very, very toxic fumes. You could also get boaters that run over the parachutes, get in the way, prevent the recovery vessels from getting close enough. They may have to try to maneuver around people and it might slow things down. Uh, you could have people jump in the water and try to get close to it. Uh, I heard some people saying like, oh, well, the recreational boaters could have been there to help, you know, if there was a problem that that would not be good. It's not we have trained recovery crews that are there to uh, to recover the crew. They've trained on contingency plans. They've trained on emergency procedures. We want them to do it. Not not the the, you know, the guy with the 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 beer cooler thing <laughs> it's a, nothing against the guy with the beer cooler like i mean if you're a safe distance away cool but uh yeah they were definitely not before um so we gotta stay out of the way of the recovery crews uh is the capsule reusable yes it is um so that's uh, uh this capsule actually itself has is this is reused it's being flown again so uh so yes it is reusable and uh it will likely be reused a third time how far how powerful is the splashdown i don't remember the exact uh the exact speed but i want to say it's around like 10 to 15 miles per hour is the speed of splashdown so you get a little bit of energy uh uh dissipation from the landing in the actual water but i think the actual touchdown is like 10 10 to 15 miles per hour somewhere in that range so i mean it's and not to mention the seats are designed for that to dissipate some of the energy as well so i think it's uh uh i, I think it's something that's there they plan for that's relatively comfortable but you know it's there does that, that make sense Will they be more sick than than quote unquote usual astronauts? Um, uh, maybe, may it may be possible. Um, I mean, they did have a they had a shorter training period. They're generally just kind of average people. Um, that uh, you know maybe I know uh, Dr. Cyan Proctor is a private pilot herself, um, and Jared Isaacman is also. I mean, he does some crazy uh, piloting stuff. He flies like fighter jets and stuff like not mil for the military, but he's done it like recreationally flying fighter jets, which is crazy. Uh, but so maybe they have a little bit of experience with, uh, you know, maneuvers and G forces a touch, but although with your private pilot stuff, you don't really do too much with G forces, but maybe Jared does, but it's possible. We have no idea, but that's also one of the reasons why we will probably not see views inside the capsule after splashdown 
lot of times they don't they don't show us that you can get uh all lots of astronauts have gotten very sick there's a few a few of the cupola lots of astronauts have gotten very sick coming back uh not like not sick like uh uh you know like actually contracted some sort of illness but you know like seasick a lot of them get kind of seasickness on the on the way back so uh, that that could be possible today as well deorbit burn underway uh yes yeah we should be we sh the deorbit burn should be underway here now at this point uh, i actually missed that uh so yeah we should be the deorbit burn should be underway uh which they they seem very uh very calm about this and they're just kind of hanging out in their seats but remember that deorbit burn is happening with the thrusters on the nose of the crew dragon capsule so that is that is pushing them back or it's pushing them forward in their seats pushing the capsule backwards so they're strapped in like this the capsule is being decelerated or accelerated in the opposite direction uh and they're being pushed forward in their seats not i mean it's not a lot it's like i'm dra i'm over uh I'm dramatizing that but it is a um but it's a, a weird sensation right so you're i mean you're basically it's like the sensation of when you throw the brakes on in the car and you're experiencing that for 15 minutes straight yeah and somebody mentioned yeah it's the the thrusters are not on the nose cone itself i mean my nose cone doesn't actually open up but they're underneath the nose cone which is why the nose cone is still open during the deorbit burn and will close after they finish the deorbit burn Capsule, um, and now we are currently in progress of the deorbit burn, which is going to basically deorbit the vehicle um, and get it on a trajectory on its way back home to Earth. Yeah, the deorbit burn uses the Draco engines on Dragon. Um, there's 16 of them uh, on the um, forward. Uh, uh, sort of underneath the nose cone, there are four there. And um, after we're done with this deorbit burn, that's uh, we're, we're not going to need those four anymore. So we'll close the hatch. Um, Dragon also has another um, subset of engines known as the Super Dracos. We're not using them as part of this splashdown. They're super strong, um, and they're really only reserved for um, the launch escape system during ascent or in case there was an emergency. But we're just relying on the Draco engines right now. And what you're looking at on your screen All is right, a so, live view inside of uh, Let me grab a couple. We'll grab a couple of other questions here. One thing I like to remind people every few minutes, uh, remember this whole event, the Inspiration Forum event, is to raise money for the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Uh, they've raised like $200 million so far total. Uh, the other day here, just on this channel, we raised $5,000. If we can try to do something similar that would be incredible i mean you guys just absolutely blew me out of the water with that uh, that number the other day so you grab a couple of these people mr music donated to saint jude uh let's scroll a whole bunch back don julio donated to saint jude thanks don let's see what else we can uh let me keep scrolling i think i missed a couple i don't know if i'll be able to scroll far enough back are we there yet <laughs> Are we there yet? Donated $50. $50 to St. Jude's. We're not there yet, but thank you. Are we there yet? Tom Curtis with a donation as well. James uh, James Kimmons. Oh, I think I mentioned James Kimmons already. So thank you guys for donating to St. Jude. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, Twitter, or Twitch, uh, consider jumping over to the YouTube stream, which where we made it nice and easy to donate to St. Jude's using the little heart button that's by the live chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, the crew have their visors shut and they become sick. Is there a sick bag built into the helmet or does it just become messy or can they open their visors? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think they're supposed to open their visors during that phase of the flight. Um, but if you're gonna, if you're gonna hurl, <laughs> I feel like you probably don't want that just all over the place. So I get, do you hurl in the suit? Or do you, like, do you open it? I mean, I feel like... I feel like you'd have to leave... You're supposed to leave your visor shut. I don't know. That is a good question. I don't know what happens in that instance. You might just have to kind of tuck your chin and, you know, put it... You know, hope it goes down 
your suit a little bit and then get cleaned up later. I don't know. Ugh. Ugh. Yikes. Uh, would you ever go on a trip to Mars? I don't think I would go to Mars. I'd go to the moon. I'd do this, the Inspiration 4 mission. I'd do that. That's cool. Um, I don't know about Mars. Hey, Anonymous! I, w I don't know who it is, but another another one of our Anonymous... Uh, an Anonymous from the Anonymous Army... Lobster Fest is on! ...has donated $100 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you, Anonymous, for donating $100. Lobster Fest is on! ...dollars. They may take medicines against throwing up. Yeah, that says George of the Jungle. That makes a whole lot more sense. I I bet they probably do. Take some. Take something. So if you are just joining us, uh, we are part of the Inspiration Four mission uh, for Splashdown. Uh, the team is. Let's see. Hey, my buddy TJ Cooney, in the chat. TJ's another awesome U space YouTuber. Has a YouTube channel called I Need More Space. Makes some pretty awesome videos definitely go check it out but tj's in the chat with <laughs> for some reason i'm i'm not surprised by this question but it says it's you and three other animals of your choosing to ride on a crew dragon for three days what animals do you go with i don't know i'd be pretty basic like i feel like i feel like your class it'd be cool to go with like a dog and a cat and a monkey that those would be my those would be my friends for three days if I had to take animals with me dog cat monkey pretty I'm, I'm pretty basic I don't I don't think you're gonna take a a cheetah up with you or something or a raccoon <laughs> Fritz 46 has taken three cats yes I feel like I need more some diversity you know when <laughs> if the if the dog starts getting on my nerves then me and the monkey will hang out for the rest of the time. <laughs> I don't know. You know, if, if you got three cats, you know, that's a lot of sass in, in one capsule there. I, I feel like, you know, I could easily get annoyed with the cat and I'd have to I'd have to be closer friends with somebody else for a little while. I don't think I could do three cats. <laughs> I love everybody's. Everybody's idea. Three birds just to see them struggle to fly. Oh my goodness, you guys are terrible. But that's a funny question. <laughs> James Kimmons with another $20 donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thanks, James. Donation number two from James. So generous. Thank you, James. You're amazing. Uh, let's see. I just saw another... Uh, where was it? Wasn't there another donation in here that I just saw? There it is, Jeff, Jeff Rolf. Jeff donated. Lobster Fest is on. $100 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Jeff, you're a rock star. Jeff Rolf. Tell us where you're from, Jeff, if you want. But thank you for donating $100. Lobster Fest is on. To St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Do you orbit burn? Again, so deorbit burn still going on. Uh, we've got about uh, maybe three minutes left in the deorbit burn. It's going to deorberate. And uh, then we get uh, the nose cone closed, and then we'll be coming up on entry. And that's where that's where it really starts to get a little nerve wracking for me is once you get into the entry phase, because that I mean, that's especially like, I don't know, for some reason, every time after entry, and we finally get a video of the capsule again. Remember, there's going to be a period of time where we'll have no video of the capsule, right? There's a blackout period. Takes them a little while to acquire signal again. So there'll be a period of time where we have no video. But once they reacquire video and you see the capsule just like falling through the sky, depending on like what kind of cloud coverage there is and how, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, visual indicators you have. If there's even just a little bit of cloud coverage, like that capsule is falling fast. And you can watch it and be like, holy smokes, they're just falling through the sky. And dear God, I hope these parachutes open because they're like, it just, that's the part, like just for a brief moment, I'm like, oh boy, this is, this is nerve wracking. And then the parachutes open and we're fine. But, but yeah. 
We'll keep an eye out. We'll keep an eye on that for that phase. Are we going to see them get out of the capsule? I don't know how long they're going to run the webcast for, but I would imagine the answer would be yes. I expect I expect that we will see them out of the capsule, uh, being uh, taken out of the capsule. What does does microgravity do to you know the regular person like you and me? Thirteen minutes. Yeah, I think uh, you bring up a good point that I don't think we've talked about yet. Is all the science that they let's see. Someone has to invent a zero G litter box before I take cats. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dem Dem J over on uh, over on Twitch says I would take a goldfish and let it swim in a bubble of water without the bowl. That's kind of I, I mean honestly that would probably work for a little while. But what happens if he pokes his head out the side of the bubble? That's kind of that would be kind of weird. Are the buttons those astronauts are pressing right now really doing anything? Um, yeah. So generally, like they're gonna monitor the progress. For the most part, the, the Crew Dragon capsule is going to control itself on the way down. Uh, but they can hit some. They, they can push buttons on them, and uh, they're really they can look at systems. They can look at their map. They can see how things are performing, see where they are, see their speeds. You know, make sure all the systems are operating. And I'm sure that they have some training on emergency contingency uh, emer contingency plans as well um so if just uh that call out was just a minute remaining and this deorbit burn Very so exciting. we should we should be pretty close <laughs> we, might, we might be about a minute off on our countdown clock so it should be it should be close we'll see do they have a shower on board? How do they keep clean? Um, no, I don't believe they do have a shower on board. I mean, I think they're going to use, uh, you know, they're, they're they're only there for three days, right? So, you know, you, you could make three you could make three days work. Uh, but they, uh, you know, they they're going to have like extra clothes that they can change into. A lot of times they would have, you know, washcloths or something like that that they can they can use or like wet wipe kind of thing so they'll have uh they'll have that sounded like that was they said burn termination burn stop burn nominal stop. burn good targeting nominal burn good targeting dragon do you have a burn complete performance nominal nose cone closure is initiated copy that spacex we show the same sweet all right they're coming I home. I believe that was Chris uh, confirming that uh, he had a nominal burn. Uh, everything seems to be going great. And now, again, we've initiated the close um, sequence of the nose cone. So in the background, Dragon is currently inhibiting those forward bulkhead Draco thrusters that we uh, had just used to complete the deorbit burn, ensuring that it's safe to latch the nose cone, sh nose cone shut for re-entry. The vehicle also initiated the Nitrox suit purge, and this will help keep the crew cool and comfortable during re-entry, which is coming up in about 20 minutes. At this point, the nose cone is closing and protecting the forward hatch for re-entry. The crew is using the screens that we saw earlier to monitor the locking of nose cone, which is done um, actually by a set of hooks. Yeah, and again, uh, the nose cone doesn't just snap shut. Uh, it does take a few minutes, I think about four minutes or so uh, to close. Um, it is a very, uh, you know, uh, technically and structurally um, sound uh, seal that needs to happen there. So it needs to be very precise, which is why it's a very slow uh, mechanism to make sure that it's closed. All right, so we're getting we're getting close to entry here now. Uh, I'll make I'll give you a reminder one more time about St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So the Inspiration Four mission, Jared Isaacman paid for this uh, mission. I mean, he set this whole thing up here. But one of the things that he was really cognizant about that he he did not want this to be. So that call out was uh, for I... the slew being complete. So the slew is effectively maneuvering. And so uh, we want to position Dragon and orient it a certain way uh, before it starts to re enter the Earth's atmosphere. So that looks like it's going well. Um, but I mentioned a little bit about uh, the. So, the, all right. So while they were, I was trying to hear what that call out was on the radio, but uh, so they. Uh, so Jared Isaacman, he was really cognizant and wanted to make sure that this wasn't just like another billionaire going to sp going to space just for a joyride. Um, he wanted to, he knew he knows that he has opportunities 
given his financial picture here that maybe other people don't have, but he wanted to use that for good. And he made this mission about the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They've raised over $200 million for St. Jude. And uh, the other day, like I said, just here on this channel, we raised $5,000 the other day. And uh, we are currently at almost $2,000 just today already that we've raised, uh, which is which is crazy. We're just we're shy of $2,000 today just and we haven't even hit splashdown yet so you guys are absolutely incredible uh so consider a donation to saint jude 100 percent of it goes directly to them never comes to me never comes to youtube doesn't take a cut never comes to over the horizon it goes straight to saint jude uh consider that consider a, a donation uh it's i've tried to make it really easy here on the youtube stream there's a little heart icon you can click on to make a donation. There's also a pinned message at the top of the YouTube chat that you can use to make a donation. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's an incredible thing. I think we got, we all should be able to agree that childhood cancer is something we need to we need to get rid of. So uh, so let's see. Let's call out a couple of those donations that I saw that I saw go by here. Uh, just recently, we had Evie Y. Evie Y donated to St. Jude. Thank you, Evie. Uh, we had Adam Hewitt donated to St. Jude as well. Joel, Joel, fuck, Joel, fuck, Joel, fuck. I don't want to. I don't want to say the wrong thing here. Joel F. <laughs> uh, Joel, thank you for donating to St. Jude. Uh, Trisha Stewart donated donated fifty dollars to St. Jude. Thank you, Trisha. That is super generous. Trisha Trisha with another donation to St. Jude. Uh, let's see. Our awesome moderator Graham. Graham puts in a lot of hard work for no pay. <laughs> Thank you, Graham, uh, for your donation to St. Jude. Uh, Everybody say thank you to Grant, as well as our entire moderator team, who all volunteer their time to uh, to help with this. You guys are awesome. I probably couldn't do this without you, uh, but that's all of them. Sebby the Time Waster, Alex Ziggyful, Graham. Uh, we got uh, Nomadic in here sometimes. Uh, let's see, who who did I miss? Uh, Framrick. I'm not sure if Framrick is, is here today. Uh, Gregorius. We got them all. I'm missing somebody. Wild West Dan. I think I got everybody. Uh, let's see who else. Another anonymous anonymous $50 donation. Thank you, Anonymous, for joining the Anonymous Army. And my buddy TJ Cooney. TJ with... Wow, that's super generous, TJ. A $50 donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you, TJ. That is... That's incredible. You guys are all... Like, you're all so generous. It's amazing. Patty Mc... Mickle... Vaney Mc, McGilvany, McGilvany donated to St. Jude. An, another anonymous donation to St. Jude Children's. Um, and so we should be hearing uh, some of that confirmation that they will be going into the blackout period as well as uh, some uh, E. Phoenix donated. Another anonymous donation. Another anonymous. Ranger Gun donated to St. Jude. Andre Andreas. Andreas. Andres. Uh, Andres. Nunez donated as well. I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry if I butcher your name. All right, but look at that. So just in that uh, just in that little brief window where we started reading that, where I started reading all those donations, we've we've passed now uh, two thousand dollars for today. We're up to over seven thousand dollars we've raised Again, on we are currently just on this channel today. That's incredible. Or not today. Seven thousand dollars total between today and the launch stream. Over two thousand dollars just today. That's that's incredible. How in the world do they store all their luggage? They put well luggage goes uh, underneath the seats. That's uh and uh, I don't think they would probably have much for three days, but uh but yeah, luggage goes underneath. There's actually the Crew Dragon capsule is actually designed to carry seven people, uh, but there's only seats for four, and that's primarily driven by NASA because uh, the NASA missions were going to have four astronauts, uh, and they were going to use the rest, the rest of the space for cargo to the International Space Station. 
This is a reused capsule from one of those missions. And, uh, but they have said that, especially now that they've done a commercial mission with crew, they might, especially only three days, like you don't, you probably don't need that much stuff. But now that they've done one of these, they kind of know what's going on. There really isn't that much stuff underneath the seats. They probably could go back to a seven seat configuration for some of these private missions, which would be kind of exciting. This and that, 1701 with a donation of St. Jude. Kraz, Traz Productions donated. Nose cone is secure for entry. There we go, nose cone, nose cone secure. Copy that, SpaceX, we show Sounds like we got that confirmation of nose cone closure. So as we begin the second... Uh, anonymous, another anonymous donation. You guys are... This, this is incredible. I, I had a goal in my head of trying to raise $500 on our channel for St. Jude. And we are, uh, like, just blown out of the water. Like, I, I'm just absolutely shocked. We're, we're now up to... Uh, $2,200 just today, $7,200 total for the two days. That's that's absolutely incredible. New view, new view with a Fest is on. A $100 donation from new view. $100 from new view. Thank you, new view. That is incredible. That's super generous. That's amazing. Thank you so much for donating to St. Jude. Will SpaceX do more missions similar to this that don't go to the ISS? Uh, yeah, I think this is the first of many that they will do. Uh, they'll start uh, they, they, the Axiom mission next year is actually going to the International Space Station. Uh, that's a private mission, but to the International Space Station. Um, but I think they'll start doing more of these, especially now that they have a successful one. Well, let's get them. Let's get them splashed down first. Let's get them splashed down. We don't want to get the uh, the cart ahead of the horse here, but I'm, um, you know, I'm predicting the future here. That would be bad if the nose cone didn't seat properly. Surprised they don't do that before the deorbit burn. Yeah, I mean, it definitely there would there's stuff that they want to protect underneath the nose cone for reusability purposes, but um, if the nose cone burned up in the atmosphere and detached, uh, probably wouldn't be the end of the world. Like, the capsule probably would still survive just fine. There isn't anything behind the nose cone or in the nose cone area that's necessarily critical for re-entry. Uh, the nose area is going to experience the least amount of heating. Um, so I think it would still survive. You just prefer that it's that it uh, closed just for reusability purposes. Can Dragon use its launch abort system as an emergency backup for landing in the event of a parachute failure? Uh, this is a question that gets asked uh, pretty, pretty frequently. And uh, I think the collect, I think we've determined that the answer is no to that. Um, the, the having to activate the Super Draco engines is inherently dangerous in and of itself. Um, and then you also then you also have uh, you know the fact that uh, you'd have to have some sort of knowledge of like when to activate those and like I, there's just a lot of bad things that could happen by that scenario. So I don't believe that that is an option. I don't think that they you know the the Super Drago engines were they were originally planned to do a hover sort of landing and maybe someday they might go back to that, but. I kind of doubt it now that they put in all this work to the parachutes. The parachutes themselves have a lot of redundancy in place, um, so we kind of don't need... Go SpaceX. Jared, you're looking good. No deltas to timeline. Vehicle's nominal, tracking no issues. The deorbit burn was right down the middle with nominal landing site targeting. No deltas on weather or recovery, and we're looking forward to having you home shortly. And copy that, SpaceX. Good deorbit burn. Good deorbit burn. Vehicles healthy. Recovery forces are there. Weather's looking good. See you guys soon. Good to be back. 
All right, so uh, they're coming back. We're only about 20 minutes away from Splashdown. And uh, the entry interface is... Uh, what time is that? That is in about 10 minutes from now. Less than 10 minutes from now. Will be entry interface. So we heard um, some awesome so, uh, uh, so we're the we're getting there. Uh, the the shoots are not in the nose. No, the shoots are not in the nose. Actually, if you uh, you're not gonna be able to see it on this uh, tiny little model that I have here, but uh, the shoots are actually in a uh, in in a compartment that's underneath the side hatch is where the shoots are stored. So you'll see after splashdown there'll be a big hole in the side underneath the side hatch uh, that's currently closed. Uh, but it will be open so at this point, after Splashdown because the parachutes come out of there. Then there's a big race line that goes up past the door and the, the parachutes are attached at the top. Uh, but the parachutes themselves are stored down below uh, in a uh, in kind of a storage bay that's below the side hatch. Uh, and then the drogue chutes, I think, are above. They're above, uh, I think, the side hatch. Above the side hatch um, is a small little drogue parachute compartment so dragon is designed to fly itself and continue to autonomously use uh what does t mean is it like time or time yeah t just stands for time so, uh, during re -entry, the vehicle and that's in the the t minus countdown clock just t minus time we're, that means we're basically 20 minutes prior to our our zero or our target time uh let's see we've got a whole bunch more donations here that we we have to acknowledge um because so many, so many generous people that I've seen go by. Dan K for the donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Randolph Solak. Rand oh, Randolph Solak. Lobster Fest is on. Randolph donated $100 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you, Randolph. That is... Lobster Fest is on. That's amazing. Let's see. Chase Junkie with a, with a $20 donation to St. Jude's as well. Thank you, Chase. That's awesome. Anonymous with another $50 donation. And holy smokes. Holy smokes. Lobster Fest is on. George Clements. George donated $200 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. George, that is, you are amazing. Everybody say thank you to George in the chat. Uh, because George Clements donated two hundred, two hundred dollars, two hundred. Space Lobster ate the tea tab. That's that's the answer. That's the answer, George. Thank you so much. Thanks for that donation. Uh, let's see. And Jer look, at, oh, you guys are so generous. Lobster Fest is on. We got another another one hundred dollar donation from Jeremy McCutcheon. One hundred dollars, Jeremy. Lobster Fest is on. Lobster Fest is on for you, Jeremy. $100 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You guys are just absolute rock stars. Thank you so much. Let's see. At what altitude does the parachute open? And thank you, George. Right. Thank you, George. Uh, what, what altitude does the parachute open? I think... I want to say it's like it's very low actually it's surprisingly low for the main shoots i think the main shoots only open at like five thousand feet above the water maybe it's ten thousand feet five or ten thousand feet can't remember the exact number but it's it's very low and i think the drogues open at like spacex please verify crew entry preparations complete with tablets restraints visors and feet Hey, Top of that SpaceX, we were just waiting a little bit longer, but we'll do it right now. Is he still watching Spaceballs, you think? <laughs> Can he watch Spaceballs all the way to Splashdown? That's what I want to know. Can he just, is it like flying on an airplane that you can just, just chill and uh, watch a movie while the pilot flies? In this case, it's the computer. <laughs> SpaceX Dragon, tablets are secure, restraints are tight, and visors are down. We are ready to come home. We copy all, Dragon. Approximately 4 minutes, 30 seconds until calm blackout. We'll see you on the other side at 2300. Holy smokes, 
guys, you guys, you guys are absolutely crushing it, minutes. crushing it on the donation. Like, I'm just blown away here because I just saw another. Let me read some of these uh, that that just came through that are just absolutely amazing. Uh, Adam Umel donated. Look at this. Look at this one again. Lobster Fest is on. Ari Rutan. Ari, Ari, Rutan, Rutan. Donated two hundred dollars to saint jude that is amazing everybody thank ari ari i'm sorry if i'm butchering your name but that's incredible two hundred dollars to saint jude's anonymous lobster fest is on with 200 or 100 dollars to saint jude thank you anonymous and then this is the one that like i mean they're all blowing me away but this this one right here lobster fest is on mountain laurel laurel cabin donated three hundred dollars to saint jude children's research hospital that's just incredible you guys are amazing i mean in the name of getting rid of childhood cancer in the world like this is an incredible like i can't believe how generous everybody is down the tubes with a donation to saint jude's as well thank you down the tubes Ra uh, let's see, Raj Kumar Ganazan. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering your name. With a donation. Alan Sher with a donation. Kevin Justice with a $50 donation. You guys are absolutely amazing. I tell you, I mean, the space, the space community in general is just amazing. The space community is incredible we're up to we're up to let's see almost four thousand oh, we're up to almost four thousand dollars just today just today that's amazing i'm just blown i'm blown out of the water again for the second day in a row for this mission um, she's from Tempe, Arizona, and she holds the seat of prosperity. Uh, she actually was awarded this seat. Uh, let's see. Um, no, all right, we're coming up on com call out for that calm blackout. Is in uh, two minutes. Period. Two minutes uh, here now. Sam Proctor actually was awarded the seat for starting her own, uh, basically business, uh, for her artwork and her poetry. But she's also an incredible. Look at this. Uh, Even another one here. Look at we Lobster got. Fest is on. Jeff Treadwell donated one hundred dollars to St. Jude. Jeff. And now uh, she's on. The That's incredible. It was able to accomplish her dream. <laughs> And uh, last there you go, Philip Swanner. And Philip Swanner looked up the exact um, the exact uh, numbers for us. Six thousand. Uh, this is feet. I'm pretty sure, right, Philip? Six thousand feet altitude for the mains. Eighteen thousand feet for the drogues, which always surprises me at how low that is. That's uh, that's very. It it seems very low. Why does calm blackout happen? So as you're going through the atmosphere, uh, you're going to get that superheated. Uh, Basically, all the the matter, the atmosphere itself, is is turning into a plasma around the vehicle. It's it's it, you're the vehicle. It's getting in the way of the vehicle. It's just plowing through the atmosphere. Superheats it. Uh, it compresses it. It turns into this plasma outside the vehicle, uh, and that plasma basically blocks radio communications in or out. Um, so you have a period of time where you can't you can't get communications. And with the micro can't get communications to or from the vehicle uh, so that's uh, that's what the communications blackout is uh, let's see a couple other donations G la chance my friend GL with a $50 donation thanks GL appreciate it BWC rich or BW critch with a donation as well, Noah Rose. Noah, oh, we got a, it's a, it's a whole straight, and it's a hundred dollar. Lobster Fest is on. A hundred dollar donation from Noah Rose, Dominic, and Graydon Hewitt. Hewitt. Noah Rose, Dominic, and Graydon. Thank you so much. That is incredibly generous. You guys are amazing. Going straight to St. Jude, all of it. Thank you so much. 
You want, yeah, Portland Phil brings up a good point here. You want to open shoots as low as possible to limit your splashdown zone. Uh, yeah, basically, because because when you're under parachute, you can drift a lot, especially with these giant parachutes that they have. Uh, you, it, it makes sense that they open so low, but it just surprises me how low it is. Uh, it just always, it just, it doesn't seem like a whole lot uh, of wiggle room, which it really isn't. Um, but, but yeah, it just, it's, it's one of those things that I, I know the reason behind it, but it still doesn't sit well. And I don't know if I'll ever accept it. <laughs> I accept the science behind it. My comfort zone doesn't accept it. Where's the splashdown location? No, we should be in blackout right now, by the way. So we're, we're in communication blackout, which will last, uh, I think it's about six or se I think it's seven minutes that the communication la blackout lasts. Oh, look at this. I even have... I knew I had this somewhere. In my timeline, I have the, the altitudes. 18,000 feet for the drogues at 350 miles per hour. Start of blackout period. Oh, there it is. Now it's the start of blackout period. So we're... Just a little bit later. Acquisition of signal in 4 minutes and 35 seconds. So 4 minutes and 4 and a half minutes. So we're just heard the call out that Dragon is about 80 kilometers in altitude. We're entering that uh, communications blackout period now. And uh, we just got an update that it's uh, expected to last about four and a half minutes. So again, we'll reestablish communications with the crew uh, after this blackout period. But um, we are um, entering the atmosphere at a very, very, very high velocity. And when we start to... Um, uh, uh, get a lot of friction from the atmosphere and the space capsule. We start to form that plasma, and plasma tends to interfere with communication. So um, it's a temporary communications blackout. And again, we're gonna uh, be uh, be able to reconnect with them in about four minutes here. All right, so we're getting a little bit closer. Paula Dent with another donation to St. Jude. Thank you, Paula, so much. A $50 donation, super generous. Anonymous donated $20. Bill Adamsley. Bill Adamsley donated Lobster Fest is on $100 to St. Jude. Bill Adamsley, you rock. That is awesome, Bill. Thank you so much. And another one. Lobster Fest is on. John Carson with $100 to St. Jude. Thank you, John Carson. $100 donation. Denny Lemire. Dennis, Dennis Lemire or Denny Lemire. Uh, $50 donation to St. Jude. Thank you very much. Thanks for donating to this cause. Tori, past shoots had hidden codes on them. Do you think Inspiration 4 will as well? Did the did the SpaceX ones have codes on them? I think we're talking I think we're talking about the Mars the Mars parachutes, right? The uh, uh, the Mars Perseverance rover. I don't recall codes on the SpaceX ones. Maybe I wasn't paying attention enough. Uh, but anyways, I started saying drogues come out at 18,000 feet, 350 miles per hour, and then the mains come out at 6,500 feet and 119 miles per hour. Uh, so they're still going pretty quickly at 6,000 feet above the water. But those mains, those mains are huge. We'll bring them down to a nice 10 to 15 mile an hour splashdown. So things are gonna things are gonna go quickly here. Now we're under. 10 minutes. Anonymous, $20 to St. Jude. Thank you so much. Yeah, Dragon is... We should be... Let's see. When did the four-minute four minute communication period start? At about 10 and a half minutes, so around six minutes, we should exit the blackout period. And they will um, determine when to fire those um, parachutes. And so... Uh, pretty much everything on Dragon is autonomous. Why don't we land on the ground? Uh, landing on the ground, they chose to land in the water because it was easier to certify from a safety standpoint. They could have continued and said, let's land it on the ground, but it was harder to get safety certification to do that because uh, you need enough redundancy uh, to, that, that you can prove that... Things are going to be okay, even with failures and all your scenarios that of all your what ifs. 
uh, you have to prove you have to prove the safety factor specifically to NASA, right? NASA is the primary customer behind the Crew Dragon capsule, so you had to prove to NASA that it was safe, and it was going to be very difficult to do that to land on land. So they decided to do the water, the water landing. Turns out the parachute development was also really really tough, but uh, but that's the reason behind the decision. It was just what's the fastest way we can get this operationally uh, set up, and landing in water was was the way to go. Marshall, Marshall Steves, Marshall Steve, Stevis, Stevies. Lobster Fest is on. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Marshall, thank you for a two hundred dollar donation. There it is. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pause yeah, reading the donations here for a minute. Of the dragon capsule coming back uh, as part of the inspiration oh, for mission. Okay. Uh, All right. Here is super excited seeing that Look at them. They're coming back. Well. Um, so yeah, a couple minutes left of um, the blackout period, and uh, we should be getting comms reestablished with the crew here shortly. All right. We're getting there. So they're still pretty high up in the atmosphere. They're just out of the blackout. They're coming out of the blackout period here now. They'll get telemetry first, usually. Then they'll, then we'll, we may hear voice comms. Where is it right now? Let's uh, let's see if we can pull it up here real quick. Real quick. We're pretty much. Well, no, this is going to be outdated. But you're going to be. What you're seeing on your screen right Florida. now is on the left hand side. That is Mission Control Hawthorne. Dragon GPS converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue shoot deploy. Here we go. Copy that, SpaceX. We show the same. All right. So this is a view from like uh, likely a high altitude observation plane. And those comms confirm that we have regained comms with Dragon, uh, and they're getting ready for Drogue deploy here shortly. Yeah, I love these tracking shots. <laughs> uh, again, that is Dragon in the center of your screen. Uh, we've got visuals of it, and we're expecting um, Drogue shoots deploy to deploy, and then the main shoots shortly after that here in a couple of minutes. Here we go. Should have drog drogues coming out here. Just a few seconds. A few seconds away from drogue shoots. That's what we need. <laughs> Again, a lot of excitement uh, for Inspiration 4 crew's return. I don't see them. Uh, waiting on drogue shoot deploy. That happens at about 18,000 feet. Dragon, brace for drogue window. Brace for drogue window. Got that SpaceX, we're bracing. Here we go. Oh, man, this now we're getting nervous. Come on. Come on. Do it. <laughs> on re-entry, the team's experiencing uh, about three to five drugs, Gs. Drugs, drugs. Um, we heard some drugs. words to, to have them brace for a drogue deploy. Uh, they will feel uh, the difference in speed when the uh, shoots do deploy. Um, that was what the, co the uh, core mentioned there. That's such a cool shot of Dragon uh, coming back down to Earth. It looks very fast uh, in this camera view here. Updated the timeline real quick, just to, because I think we're a bit ahead of time. Drogues, drogue, there it is. Yeah, so this is a really <laughs> This is a great shot of Dracking looking off Come at down, the drug down. shoots. Here we go. A lot of communication going back and forth between the crew uh, and ground station, but the drogue's job is to slow the vehicle down from about 350 miles an hour Man, to 120. The... We are expecting the, the main clouds. shoots for these to cut off and the main shoots to come uh, shortly after this. <laughs> Dragon, these are four healthy millions. Dragon, the satellite monitor. You have visual from the Covey forces. Yeah, 
evidence for the good news. Four good means. <laughs> And at 4.04 p.m. Pacific time, yes. we do have confirmation that the yes. main chutes have deployed. And you can see that on your left-hand wow. screen of a camera looking forward uh, above the Dragon capsule, looking at those four main chutes. 1,000. Copy, 1,000. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the next event coming up now is a visual confirmation of Splashdown. You can see the Dragon capsule on your right-hand screen. Uh, slowly coming down now. We've, we've talked about how fast the vehicle uh, has been traveling, um, but they will be touching down approximately 15 miles per hour when they touch the uh, Atlantic Ocean there. 800, SpaceX. <laughs> we copy 800. There it is. Now, the, the Dragon 1 program had great success with the water landing with 20 successful splashdowns over the course of that program. Nine of which were carried out by flight-proven Dragon spacecraft. And this is a great shot. Dragon continuing to descend back towards Earth, again targeting a landing, uh, excuse me, a splashdown off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Copy 600. I think my timeline might be, now might be behind. That's all right, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They're coming home, they're under four good mains. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Four hundred. Four hundred feet, I'm assuming. Copy four hundred. Maybe meters. I don't who knows. Wish they would back it out so we can see all the parachutes. Zoom out. 200, we're bracing. 200. We copy 200. Here we go. Oh, timeline's gonna be right on the money, I think, actually. Look at this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, I don't see the water. 1, ah, oh, we're a couple seconds off. Inspiration 4, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home to planet Earth. Your mission has shown the world that space is for all of us and that everyday people can make extraordinary impacts in the world around them. Thank you for sharing your leadership, hope, generosity, and prosperity. And congratulations on your incredible journey. Yeah. Thanks so much, SpaceX. It was a heck of a ride for us. It's just getting started. I don't know what he said, but... Coffee just getting started. All right, I see no recreational boaters. That's good for now. I didn't, I didn't see any last the one time either till late. So welcome back, <laughs> Inspiration4. The Dragon Resilience Capsule has returned. The crew has returned. Uh, what a phenomenal, phenomenal visual that we got. Um, and I love that Jared said, we're just getting started. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Look at that. And I, I think it even has like navigation lights on it. Is there a green light on, on the, the side here? And there, I think there was a red light on the other side. I thought those were underneath the nose cone, but interesting. Right, here you go. Those are the fast boats out there to start the recovery right here above my head. Uh, they're going to they're gonna check and make sure that there's no hypergolic fuels that would be hazardous to them. That'll be kind of that'll be one of the first things that they do is is check that. Uh, they're also going to pull the pull the parachutes in, uh, collect those, and uh, then then they're going to start uh, hooking it up, lift it up into the dragon's nest. 
and the the crew will actually get out on on board the the recovery ship. Jared had uh, given us the confirmation of stable one. What that means is Dragon has um, splashed down and is upright. There's also a stable two. Um, Dragon can actually be um, upside down or sideways. Um, mm -hmm. It is waterproof and has systems where it can pump seawater into some bladders to help keep it upright. So um, again, stable one is the, the best possible scenario that we can achieve and that's what we see on screen right now. And just something to note, um, there are going to be a few operations that happen um, before the crew can get out of the capsule. So they will be strapped into their seats, remain strapped into their seats um, throughout the, this and these operations until uh, basically until hatch open uh, once we have the Dragon capsule on board the recovery vessel. Uh, so we do have some events uh, coming up next. Uh, the um, fast boats will be approaching the Dragon capsule. Uh, they'll be doing some inspections to make sure that it is safe before we begin operations uh, to lift Dragon out of the water onto the recovery vessel. Dragon, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in one minute. And copy that SpaceX, we're looking forward to seeing it. And Dragon, with that, we request to come aboard via display clam. Oh, they are gonna show us inside. I think they, they kind of showed us inside a little bit already. Requesting with permission to come parachutes. aboard via display cam. Permission granted, come aboard SpaceX. Yeah, we're going to see inside. We, we haven't seen inside after splashdown yet, have we? Like immediately after splashdown. This is awesome. And what this you're seeing so on cool. your screen is uh, the recovery team approaching Dragon. Again, they will be uh, starting to do some inspections. Uh, they'll do some ordinance and hypergol checks just to make sure that the vehicle is safe before they begin rigging Dragon uh, to bring the vehicle onto the recovery vessel. And I think on the left-hand screen, that is uh, someone on a jet ski helping to pull some of those chutes out of the water. Um, they did automatically detach from Dragon once they once the vehicle splashed down. Um, so now they are removing them from the water. Yeah, it is super important that we cut those main parachutes. We don't want any type of wind or even the water to uh, pull or drag the, the Dragon capsule. But uh, when we did see Dragon splash down, we also saw really good visuals of the mains being cut as well. Um, there is boat and personnel that are going to go out there and collect um, those chutes as part of the recovery operation. We are expecting about an hour from splashdown until we can get the crew outside of the capsule. Again, we're going through a series of safety checks and some other operations to get uh, Dragon hoisted, rigged up, um, and lifted up onto the main recovery vessel before we can open that side hatch and get the crew out. All right. Oh, this is so awesome. Look at this. Oh, now we're getting now we're getting a close-up view. Even though it's kind of getting dark, uh, but we still got a close-up view there. The uh, recovery vessels are going to get, uh, you got your fast boats, they get there in a hurry. And, this is the inspiration and then the actual recovery vessel, it's a little bit slower, going to take its time getting up there. Incredible, incredible. There we go. There's inside. This is over their shoulders. That is, uh, I believe, Jared on the left and Cyan, Dr. Cyan Proctor on the right. You can kind of just see the tops of their visors. She's taking a selfie, it looks like. <laughs> Wouldn't you? I would. That's for sure. Oh, man. I must admit, my heart stopped for a second when they were falling. I was like, I, that, that part makes me so nervous. And I was a little bit nervous as well because my timeline wasn't following what was... Hypergol sweeps and ordnance checks are nominal. Rigging is in progress. Approximately two five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC. That's good. No hypergolics. So we'll be able to proceed relatively quickly with recovery. Should be. Mm 
Did they copy? Some excitement from the crew on board. And if you noticed um, the difference in view... Um, so, let's see. Yeah, so anyway, so the observer is talking about, did anybody else think the shoots were delay, delayed in deploying? I, I was kind of thinking that as well on my in my head and it was only it was really my own fault because my timeline i put together put together the timeline just to give everybody an idea of like what's happening but my timeline wasn't matching up with the screen and so it was like i think i up what did i i increased the timeline by one minute so i was i was one minute off initially and i increased the timeline by one minute like right around drogue deployment because i was like uh this is, the drogues aren't out they should be out by now. So then once I fixed the timeline, then everything was good. But I, I got myself nervous for a minute because the drugs didn't come out when I thought they were going to come out. Ugh. I missed the altitude and the telemetry. Oh, yeah, I didn't see. I might have had it covered up by the events list. Did I have it covered up? I'm not sure. I don't remember seeing it anywhere. I want to see what movie they were watching. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Let me, uh, let's go back. I, there were a couple donations that I do want to acknowledge, like Anna Rude, Ned Carney. I'm probably butchering your name. I'm sorry. But a $30 donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. That is amazing. Thank you so much. There were a couple others that were way back here. Can I scroll back far enough or are they going to scroll off my screen? Marshall Steve, Marshall Steves, Steves, Stevies, Steves. Stevez, Marshall donated two hundred dollars right before, right before the uh, the whole everything got underway. There was one. I know there was one more. There it is. I knew there was somebody. It was Heather Knapp. I, I knew I needed a lobster fest is on a lobster fest sound for Heather Knapp, who donated SpaceX with the public. What do you say? I don't know what he said. What did he say? Well, let's just thank Heather Knapp for the $100 donation to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you, Heather. Wanted to make sure I got that. Saw it go by. Wanted to make sure I didn't forget it. Then we got another one from Chandler Hirsch. Chandler, thank you so much. $50 donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You guys are so generous. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. If you're just Chandler. now joining us, you are tuned into the Inspiration 4 mission. The all civilian crew has now returned back to Earth. Uh, what you're seeing on your right hand screen are recovery operations currently in progress. Uh, the crew has already done their safety check to make sure that the vehicle was okay to approach, and now they have begun. Uh, some rigging operations. They're um, installing some of the rigging hardware that they need to be able to lift the capsule out of the um, out of the water onto the recovery vessel. Um, and on your left hand screen is the live view inside of Dragon of the crew. Um, and it's just been such an incredible mission so far. Like they lifted off on Wednesday, um, expected to be in space for about three days. They were able to perform some science experiments. They were able to do some charity events, talk to, uh, again, this, this mission was all for uh, a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So they got to talk to some St. Jude patients live while in space and doing backflips. <laughs> yeah, and, and Guys, we're getting, speaking of St. Jude's, we're getting close to $10,000. We've just, we've just this channel and you awesome, awesome, um, the amazing Space Lobster Nation, whether you know it or not, you all are part of our community here, Space Lobster Nation. And uh, we've generated just on this channel, almost $10,000 for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which is amazing, like absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for being so generous and just for being awesome and hanging out with us. That's so crazy. Anonymous with another $50 donation. Thank you, Anonymous, for joining the Anonymous Army. Angelo says this event changes everything and opens opens up all kinds of doors for humanity. Yeah, I mean, I think once you start to see this, like, we've got a successful a successful mission, 
to like into orbit, three days in orbit, in, or, on orbit, in orbit, in on orbit, three days. Like you got, you have like these are non-professional astronauts now. They're, they're civilian astronauts. That's amazing. The Anonymouses of the world unite, says Chris Harris. I love it. Good Olden said uh, he got sonic booms here in, in Naples, Florida. That's pretty cool. He got to hear the uh, hear the sonic booms. Scott Johnson, sometimes I have to pinch myself when I realize I work for the company that does the stuff we do. Hashtag SpaceX rocks. Scott, you work for you work for SpaceX? If so, that's awesome. You guys are doing like you're just crushing it. Crushing it. It's awesome. They liked it so much they don't want to get off now. Yeah, right. I don't think I would want to get off. Be like, yeah, you take your time. I'm gonna just float here for a little while. Andrew Renna with a donation to St. Jude's. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew. I almost called you Andra. Andrew. Thank you very much. And so the Dragon Capsule is is there. It's it's floating there now because it's not, you know, choppy. Will they get their wings? I I think they these they would qualify for their wings. So after after the Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic uh launches, the FAA revised their uh definition for who gets astronaut wings. And they said, I forget what the language is that they said, but basically it was like anybody who flew up, up above a certain altitude. And then they revised it to, you have to fly above a certain altitude and like contribute to scientific research. Um, and I believe this would, con I believe this qualifies uh, because they did do, my headphones are getting all stuck behind my head here. Uh, but they did do some scientific research, so this wasn't just a completely a joyride. Like, they actually did scientific research on board. Uh, they had, like, a, a portable ultrasound that they were test like, monitoring how fluid shifts in each of them. Um, so they they were doing... I don't, I'm not sure what other medical stuff that they were doing, but I know uh, Haley Arsenault, a medical officer, she was doing... Uh, she was doing medical experiments on board, and the other astronauts were participants <laughs> so they were all contributing someone needs to design an, an anonymous army shirt <laughs> if you design an anonymous army shirt for our, the space lobster store i will uh i will definitely put it in there <laughs> and i'm sure and i'm sure we can uh we can get you a little something for your uh for your contribution Zach Zach Yorty donated to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you very much, Zach, for your generosity. Eric Richter with a donation to St. Jude. Thank you, Eric, for your generosity. You guys are just amazing. But there's a side hatch. I mean, that's that's where the the crew is going to egress out of. That side hatch was sealed three days ago, and it hasn't been opened since. And so. Um, can you typically uh, can you give a shot? This is from Eric Eric Richter, who who submitted a donation. So I don't usually I try not to do shout outs. Otherwise, I'd spend the entire time doing shout outs. But because Eric Richter asked for a shout out and he also contribute, he also made a donation to St. Jude's. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, read the comment, which is, can you give a shout out to my buddy? Hello, buddy. <laughs> and say snacks. OK, I feel like I'm being tricked into something. And that that's going to turn into a meme or a soundbite somewhere on the internet, which scares me. But there you go, Eric. Thank you for the donation to St. Jude's. Shouldn't you actually fly something to get wings? Yeah, see if, like, I mean, by that logic, like, you would have, you know, seven astronauts that fly on board the uh, the space shuttle, and you're only going to give one of them astronaut wings? Just the one that was the pilot? The others wouldn't get astronaut wings? Or, like, what about the other, the NASA Crew Dragon astronauts, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley? Only one of them was the pilot. So, only the pilot gets astronaut wings? I don't know. Become. I mean, I think. It, I think as we start to see commercial space flights, 
become more prevalent, like, you're probably going to have to revise definitions here to figure out, all right, you know, how do you remain the re, uh, retain the prestige of being an astronaut, but also acknowledge the the technological, scientific, and engineering developments that are allowing these people to to go to space, right? Like, I mean, I think somebody that you know, for example, if somebody if somebody were to fly to fly to Mars, are they an explorer? Are they an astronaut? Are they a tourist? What what are they going to be? Like, just because they're not flying the vehicle, does that mean that somebody going to Mars is not technically an astronaut? You know, they're, you're just going to call them a, a, a space tourist? I don't know, maybe. I could make an argument either way, I feel like. I, I feel like there's no clear answer. So we're trying to draw a line in the sand where there's no, there's, there's no clear line. There you go. Chusakan, one of our awesome moderators, said uh, Haley did uh, fluid shift scans, intracranial pressure scans, took blood samples, and microbiome swabs. There you go. There's the full list from Chusakan. Thanks for thanks for giving us that. Couldn't remember all those off the top of my head. It's a problem with talking and streaming at the same time. Is it's hard to it's hard to think and talk and manage the stream all at one time. Being a passenger seems like a low qualification. Yeah, I mean, again, I think, I think it's hard to draw that line. Like, it's somewhere you have to draw a line. Like, what do we want astronauts to be? Do we want them to only be pilots? Because if that's the case, then we would only have, you know, maybe a handful of astronauts. And, you know, you go back to the days of like Mercury, Gemini, you know, those days, maybe Gemini, but maybe like the early Mercury days, like technically those, they would not have been astronauts because they didn't really, they they just went up. They were suborbital. They went up, they came back. I mean, I think I think that's a slippery slope because then you'd have to like retroactively determine who was at astronauts or, you know, space shuttle astronauts. Only the pilot was an astronaut. The others, you know, mission specialists, scientists that went up, like, yeah, maybe they weren't piloting the craft, but they still went to space. They lived in space for days. This endeavor has made the term astronaut obsolete. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's hard to figure out what what do you, what do we want to? I mean, I I don't think there's a clear definition. We have to we have to determine where we want. In my eyes, I think they're astronauts. If you want to call them, like, non-professional astronauts, I kind of like that, that idea, like calling them professional astronauts versus non-professional astronauts. Um, you know, I could even, I think I had argued during my live stream that, like, your Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic passengers were astronauts. I don't know, I might be changing my tune on that. I feel like I could call them, like, you know, you may even qualify those and call them suborbital astronauts or something like that, or... Uh, but, you know, they didn't really... I feel like they didn't, you know, they were really in space for a limited amount of time. And they, like, that feels much more like space tourist than astronaut to me. Like, this feels like, this feels like they're astronauts to me. Pilots don't even pilot the rocket. It's all automatic. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, they don't really, I mean, even, even the pilots... Like the Crew Dragon pilot, the official Crew Dragon pilots don't really do much piloting. Rigging is complete. Approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Okay, copy that. Five minutes, and we are. Oh, there we go. In flight entertainment. We copy in flight entertainment. In flight entertainment. The crew is having a great time with in-flight entertainment. Um, uh, so yeah, it looks like they're all in great. I like spirits. I like TJ Cooney's comment. He says, "If I can go to space, you could call me whatever you want." <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Do they? I guess it does. I don't really. If I'm in space, I don't care what you call me. If I'm in space, y'all. Yeah, this is. 
again, pretty incredible um, to to see where we are today with this. Mission. Here we go. So this is the dra this is the dragon's so, nest right here. Uh, They'll lift the capsule up out of the water, hoist it up to the dragon's nest, set it down there. Then that whole nest kind of pushes forward towards the front of the ship a little bit. And uh, then they will egress from the capsule and uh, they'll open the hatch and stuff like that. So still waiting on, still waiting on all that. Would you go into orbit if given the chance? Yeah, I'd consider it. I, I feel like I would ride a crew dragon. I, th I think that would be a lot of fun. I would do that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to go to Mars. I, I might pass on the Mars trip, but the Moon, orbit, space station, I'd consider those. Those would be cool. Mark Tickner says you have to complete an orbit to qualify as an astronaut as a minimum. Again, I think the question then would be: are, So is that? Uh, are you gonna? Are you gonna take away the astronaut title from uh, the Mer some of the Mercury? Mercury astronauts that didn't complete an orbit? That's a, that's a tough, uh, tough thing to do. Does this crew have... Serious question, says Michael. Does this crew have the training to survive and return on their own if needed? To me, if that's true, I'd say they're astronauts. Uh, yeah, I believe that they do have training to operate the vehicle in contingency plans, so they can... I mean, they, they would have to be trained on, like, parachute, manual parachute deployment. Uh, they'd be, they're trained on uh, manual burn procedures. Um, so, yeah, I guess I would say, in answer to your question, that yes, they are trained to do all of that. Yeah, and Odie Dillon, uh, this was, o Odie's got the argument that I kind of made beforehand, which is the, the current definition you look at like Webster's dictionary it says that an astronaut is a person who travels beyond beyond Earth's atmosphere or they're a trainee for spaceflight. That's it. That's the end of the Webster dictionary definition. So the Webster dictionary just says that it's a person who travels beyond Earth's atmosphere. Doesn't say anything about orbit number of orbits. Doesn't say anything about completing completing science missions. The FAA did recently revise their definition to say that you have to you have to do contribute to some sort of scientific progress in order to be considered an astronaut by the FAA. experience they can just sit back <laughs> relax we'll take care of everything else we can see that the gap between the go searcher boat and dragon is starting to close um, we are expecting uh, uh, to hoist dragon out of the water and again uh, put it on that nest that you see on the bottom uh, middle of your screen in, in a few minutes here and weather has been just great for us today actually through this whole mission um this is such a unique mission where we did have to ensure that weather upon liftoff as well as return would be well um, and not just the weather in the atmosphere but the the water where we are landing and you can see on your screen that it's very calm this makes it really uh, a lot easier for the crew to perform the recovery operations um, just great, great weather all around for this mission. Is the Starliner rocket is the Starliner rocket dead? Well, Starliner is a capsule, not a rocket. Starliner is going to fly on the Atlas rocket. Uh, but is it dead? No, uh, it is delayed though. Uh, so we're we're kind of we're just kind of in a holding pattern for Starliner, but. NASA is still committed to having two commercial providers uh, for sending crew to the International Space Station. So uh, it, it'll fly someday. It's just in a holding pattern right now. The 
So we just Let's saw see. the crew so, a line. And Lloyd, I don't know, Lloyd is, seems like he's very upset that I'm streaming this, but I I mean, uh, I'm just going to address Lloyd's comments. I mean, I don't know if he's trolling us or what he's saying, but Lloyd, Lloyd says that the SpaceX channel is free and they're not trying to make money off of someone else's accomplishments. Uh, I feel like he's trying to say that I'm trying to make money off of this. Um, in case you're not aware, Lloyd, uh, Overlook Horizon is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization here in the United States, so I make a total of zero dollars off of any of this stuff that uh, that we do here. And in fact, uh, today, uh, I'm going to take that opportunity to say that even today, we have Super Chats turned off, which normally Super Chats come to Overlook Horizon, and that's how we fund things like the broadcast and lighting. I just had to buy a new light uh, the other day, if you were watching the other day, because one of my lights died. So uh, I had to buy a new light. Uh, I mean, that's what, what usually comes to it, but none of it comes to me personally, because Overlook Horizon is a an official 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization registered here in the United States. Um, but with that being said, uh, today we've even turned off Super Chats in favor of helping raise funds for the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So anybody donating today, uh, those funds, 100% of them, go to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. None of them come to me. None of them come to Overlook Horizon. And none of them even go to you. None of the funds go to YouTube. YouTube doesn't even take a cut. Uh, they all, it goes straight to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, and so that's, that's what we're, uh, that's what it's about here today. Uh, so money aside, not everybody's trying to, to, you know, steal your money. Uh, so may maybe somebody is, uh, but I have a real job outside of here, where is, which is where how I pay and put food on my table for my family. Uh, this is something that I volunteer my time for. So, and uh, I love seeing our community raising funds for St. Jude. So consider a donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Brace for capsule lift. Here we go, coming up on capsule. Lift. Oh, there you go, jumping off the capsule. I want that job. The guy that gets to jump off you the capsule right, comms, right before uh, lift. They are getting ready to lift the Dragon capsule. You saw the last recovery uh, crew member hop off of the Dragon capsule into the water and onto the fast boat there as they clear the way for lifting the Dragon capsule. Here we go, getting ready to hoist it out of the water. And you'll see that that entire uh, structure there on the side. It's kind of tilted back there, the little support. Yeah, so you here can comes see, Dragon it's out start, of the water. It'll lift and tilt forward. Man, that's got to feel like a surreal experience. You're kind of just swinging all over the place. And here you can see, look, right under the hatch, that's the main parachute compartment there. It's right under the hatch, and above it is the drogue parachute compartment. Incredible. Dragon is being lifted onto the recovery of vessel into the dragon nest. That is what you see them setting the vehicle down on right there. You can see at the very bottom of Dragon some water coming out. Again, that's the ballast system that help, helps keep Dragon upright in the seawater or in the ocean. Um, so it's functioning as designed, uh, and Dragon is now on the recovery vessel. <laughs> Dragon's almost a little bit of a mix of a rocket, spacecraft, uh, and a little bit of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it does everything you need it to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dragon, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks. Stand by for translation to egress platform in approximately one minute. We're getting close to egress. They're out of the water. All right, we got a couple of a couple more donations coming in for St. Jude. I uh, see some fist pumps from Dr. Sai. I think we're getting close to passing ten thousand dollars if we haven't done it already. Uh, but let me see. There were a couple donations somewhere. Here we go. One from John T. Right there. Lobster Fest is on. Need the sound effect for John T. John T. Donated one hundred dollars to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you, John T. For contributing. That is awesome. You guys are all so generous. We'll see Earth from Earth now. They'll become Earthlings again. Let's see. I feel like there was another one somewhere. Oh, 
heard was some comms, just letting the crew know that they will be translating the um, dragon on the nest um, and reorienting it into a position on Ghost Searcher uh, so that it is in a good, stable position for them to uh, open the hatch. Uh, so while dragons we are we're almost at ten thousand dollars we're still just shy of ten thousand dollars raised for saint jude children's research hospital so we are getting very close but anonymous is joining the anonymous army and helping us out uh with a fifty dollar donation to saint jude thank you anonymous we're getting closer once the hatch is open that will be jared haley cyan and chris's first breath of fresh earth air since boarding Falcon 9 at the start of their mission uh, on September 15th. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a couple... Just now joining us, you are... A couple of comments uh, that I see. One of them that's that's always common about right about now, because we're all getting impatient, we want to see the crew, is why does it take so long to recover? Uh, somebody said that the Apollo capsules were done much faster. They weren't. Uh, a lot of the Apollo capsules, uh, some of them took like up to an hour and a half to recover. So this is this is pretty average timing to, to do this sort of recovery. Um, so... Yeah, it's not, uh, like, I don't think it's a huge deal that it takes an hour. I mean, yeah, we all want to see it. We're all, you know, nobody wants to, but we all want that instant gratification. But let's get it going. Let's get moving. I heard the beep, the beep and the boop, but it's... No? No? No signal. Oh, it's gone. Oh, there it goes. All right, now they're moving to the egress platform. So there goes Dragon is, sliding up the they ship. They are translating the vehicle uh, to just under the uh, helicopter pad on the vessel. Spraying it with a hose. I'm not sure what that's about, but they do have masks on for the hypergolics. Like they're starting to wash it down, <laughs> get it clean, prepared for that hatch opening interesting yeah, that i remember uh during the dm2 mission when they they actually had hypergolics in the area that uh that they had to wait for egress for uh they were not wearing masks which i thought was kind of crazy but uh yeah it looks like they they actually have gas masks on now and that uh, that's primarily going to be for your your hypergolics i mean those are those are very very nasty chemicals that you don't want to you don't want to mess with so so it's still going to be probably a few more minutes before we we see recovery we're getting there i have hatch opening set for uh, one hour yeah, things are moving after, quite quickly uh, we after launch but ago, that will probably go much faster now so I'm guessing that right one hour again, is probably the the too long see their faces but on the left hand side of that shot that's Jared Isaac and then the mission commander to his right is dr. cyan Proctor the um, uh, mission pilot uh, to Dr. Cyan's right is... Uh, let's Bosky, see. Mission, let's see what other comments here we got. Um, Jared Isaacman's left is uh, Haley Arsenault, the uh, medical officer of the mission. And I'm sure they're all excited to come back to <laughs> Earth. Um, uh, Philip Swanner with another donation to St. Jude. Thank you very much, Philip. <laughs> Philip. Kind of just went bloop when I said that. Philip. <laughs> this mission just such incredible individuals too bad no paypal for donate not giving google my card number uh yeah i don't know uh i'm sure that there's got to be an option to donate with paypal to saint jude uh but i don't know i don't know how to do that i mean i just set it up through youtube to make it easy and obviously youtube is owned by google so i can't i can't do anything with that the vehicle shortly here 
That's definitely going to be a very, very exciting time. Let's see. Are you keeping a running tally? Yes, I have uh, the running total that uh, that we have going, and we are just under. And so, you know. Oh, we're o we are now over ten thousand dollars. We are over over ten thousand dollars that we've raised in two days for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So we have passed ten thousand dollars now. That. $7 million for St. Jude. Oh, there you go. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which is incredible. That's going to save a lot of children's lives. Yeah, and their goal, their total goal is to raise $200 million. It sounds like, I'm not sure what the total is at, but Jesse Anderson just said that they had raised over $157 million, uh, which is a huge number. I thought it was getting closer to $200 million, but I don't know where it stands right now, but they're trying to raise $200 million for St. Jude. But I know here, here on YouTube, Total, if you look at the top of the chat. Oh, they're about to open the hatch here. Great comms. Oh, there it goes. It's coming open. There you can look see the side hatch is now officially open. And some exciting uh, waves from the crew. A little protective uh, ring there for the opening. Now they are putting on uh, some protection uh, along the hatch door uh, for while they egress the vehicle here. So we have members of the recovery team inside the, the capsule with the crew members. <laughs> um, they're doing some checkouts, uh, make sure everything is good before their crew can exit the capsule. But this is certainly very, very exciting. Uh, again, that hatch has been closed and sealed for three days. This is the first time it's opened since we lifted off Wednesday, uh, September 15th. And we have some fist pumps from Jared. I'm sure the entire crew is super excited. <laughs> Could see them waving. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Lots of excitement around. from the crew as they're getting ready to egress the Dragon spacecraft. Captain Happy says the boom was very loud in Southwest Florida. Surprised me. That's awesome that you heard it. Are we sure that there are four in there? Yeah, there are four in there for sure. Is there any other channel this size that has raised more money than we have? Our size per donation must be way better than most. Way to go, Tori. Yeah, I I am just blown away. I mean, we're not an enormous an enormous channel. I mean, we got a good a pretty good audience. Like I think we're a good size. But yeah, to raise over $10,000 in looks two, like they in just are, two uh, live streams taking their tablets is incredible. From each of the Absolutely incredible. Preparation for this egress. Now there is a procedure uh, that they will go through. Um, uh, let's see. And we even had another uh, another couple of donations, like RQ Rocks. RQ Rocks donated to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Starting with egress of seat one. We even had Don Ryan. Don Ryan. Lobster Fest is on. Hundred dollar donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you, Don. That is super, super generous. That's, that's incredible. That's amazing. Can't believe... Can't believe how many people... We had, we've had so many $100 donations. I had say... I told... I think I told you guys that I was... Pla I was I was hoping. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if we could raise like 500 bucks for St. Jude? Like, that would be so cool. Over ten thousand dollars now, and I had planned at the beginning to use our Lobster Fest button for anybody anybody that donated over a hundred dollars. I was going to use that Lobster Fest button, thinking that you know maybe we get maybe we get one. Try to make, but we got so many so many donations. It's insane. 
And even if you didn't, if you didn't donate a hundred dollars, like that's cool too. Like just the amount. I wish uh, this is this is one thing I wish YouTube would show me. Oh, there they are. Hey guys, it's like I'm here too. Hey guys. Love it. That's awesome. Okay, that was the crew members have Um, one thing that they don't show me, which I wish they did, was the number of donations. Um, because I would love to just see how many. Like just generous donations that that came in, because even that's incredible. Like just the sheer number of people that donated. Like the people donating five bucks here, five bucks there. Like you guys are awesome too. Like that is so incredible. That's just amazing. They will have a team that does help them as they egress or exit the vehicle. Um, as they have been out in microgravity for the last three days, uh, they have not felt the gravity of their own body in three days. Um, so this is very standard procedure. Getting them out uh, takes two hours. Now we're not at two hours yet. We're at uh, we're only 42 minutes past past splashdown, and we're about to egress. So I had one hour on the timeline. I think it's. Uh, this will give them some space as they exit. I think we're actually very close to when egress is going to happen i'm going to i'm going to bump it to actually oh i i don't even have hatch opening yet hatch opening was supposed to be one hour so let's do this like this and like this and we'll update it and say safe okay so we're just waiting on crew egress which is probably going to be in about five minutes from now the crew will start coming out of the capsule five ten minutes Looks like we have our first crew member, Haley Oh, Arsenault, not even. <laughs> 30 seconds. Egressing the vehicle. That was quick. It was I was like, yeah, five, ten minutes, we'll have somebody out. Here comes Haley. <laughs> I didn't even finish saying the sentence. She was sitting in seat one to the left. How weak do you think they will be when they get out? Uh, I don't think it's going to really be that bad because it's only been three days, right? You could you could lay in bed for three days and still stand up at the end. <laughs> she looks very excited, even if we're just looking at the uh, backside of her SpaceX spacesuit helmet. <laughs> She goes, heading on out. <laughs> and there right. she is. Medical Officer Haley Arsenal has now egressed the vehicle, the first of the Inspiration 4 crew, and so very excited. Lots of waves, thumbs Some up. Thumbs up. <laughs> That's amazing. Getting a little photo up. <laughs> And it looks like up next is Dr. Cyan Proctor. Yeah, this is very exciting for the crew to be uh, exiting the capsule and finishing their Inspiration4 mission, a mission that's done so much uh, for folks around the world. Yes, absolutely inspiring all the way around. Just an incredible mission with an incredible crew. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Dr. Cyan Proctor. <laughs> there she is, excited as ever. That's amazing. Dr. Cyan Proctor. Oh, I love it. Love it. <laughs> Just struggling Good, down. I know, no problem she at all. She doesn't look very weak. <laughs> she looks pretty strong there. <laughs> Looks like mission specialist Chris Sembroski is up next to egress the vehicle. <laughs> Look 
looks like some dancing there. <laughs> Again, there is crew there to help them egress to make sure that they do not damage um, their suits or themselves on their way out. And that is Chris Sombroski again, the mission specialist. <laughs> Again, with a smile all over his face, super excited, <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Commander Jared Isaacman getting ready to egress the vehicle as well. The final fourth Inspiration Four crew member of the first all civilian crew mission to orbit. And what a way to close it out. He was really the, um, uh, the, the person with the vision. <laughs> there he is. Oh, that's all of them out. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Commander Jared Isaacman of the Inspiration4 crew. So excited. <laughs> He, he, he seems a little bit hugs all over Amazing. Now they will be uh, awesome. doing standard procedure, going into the medical room on the recovery vessel um, and doing some medical checks to make sure that the crew is safe and healthy. Um, and then they will hop on a helicopter and head back to Florida. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, now that Jared, Haley, Cyan, and Chris shot, are safely... Queen Shotwell on the left, giving Earth, applause um, to the room. And getting checked out by our medical team, we're going to wrap up our live coverage of their historic return. Uh, we started this day about two hours ago. Uh, we had um, successful trunk separation. We completed a deorbit burn, closed the nose cone. Uh, we got through that blackout period of communications. Uh, both sets of shoots uh, deployed um, awesome and the crew splashed down, we hoisted them up, and they have just exited the vehicle. Next up, they will catch a helicopter ride back to shore where they will be rejoined by their families. So welcome back to the Inspiration4 crew. It has been an honor and a privilege to share their journey with all of you as we continue this new era in human spaceflight. Yes, for updates, uh, check out our social media. Um, also, be sure to donate to St. Jude. There's a donation button if you're watching on YouTube on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, the Netflix documentary is coming out with its fifth and final episode here shortly as well, and that will conclude liftoff and splashdown and return of the Inspiration4 mission. Again, thank you to everyone that has joined us so far, and thank you, everyone, for following along. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Well, that's it. They did it. They made it. Where's our music? I don't know where, where, what happened to my music? All right. Well, mission accomplished. That was, that was awesome. I can't believe how, uh, how smooth everything went complete success it was uh absolutely incredible i'm just i'm blown away by the whole the whole thing it's uh it's absolutely amazing uh and you guys are amazing everybody that considered donate and donated to to saint jude children's research hospital it's just amazing karen rosenblum threw one in karen thanks for sneaking one in here before the end Appreciate your generosity donating to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. These are, uh, you guys are all amazing. I think we've got an amazing, amazing community here. I can't believe how, uh, how generous everybody is. It's fantastic. Uh, so, so far, I hope people will consider continuing to donate. But so far, just us here at Space Lobster Nation... This channel alone, in two days, has raised $10,236.53 that's going to St. Jude 
Children's Research Hospital, which is amazing. Especially considering that two days ago before I went live, I was hoping to raise $500. It was like $500 would be really cool. So, and anonymous, we've got another anonymous joining our, an an another anonymous joining the anonymous army. Thanks for bumping that in as well. This was, this was incredible. Can't believe how awesome this was. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's where we're going to leave it. We're just going to have to leave it, leave it right there. End it on a, end it on a high note, right? Everybody did, uh, we did it all. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, says Alex Ziggy full. A couple people said they donated on the webpage. See, yeah, whether you donated here or on the webpage, either is cool. Uh, it, because it's all going to St. Jude either way. I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's awesome to, that, uh, that we can see what kind of, what our community contributed. Because, you know, for me, I like to, I just like to see how awesome this community is. I mean, th these are the kinds of things that, uh, that, uh, keep me going because you guys are awesome. This is, this is what gets me excited about, about, uh, being part of the space YouTube community is just seeing how awesome you guys are. So there we go. Might have already asked this, but why did the comms drop? So the blackout period happens uh, because plasma forms. So as it plows through the atmosphere, air gets superheated, turns into plasma around the vehicle. Can't really get communications through that plasma. So. All right, well. All right, that'll be the final question. I think we're gonna end it right there. Uh, consider if you want to continue the conversation consider jumping over on our discord channel. Uh, that's free. There's no cost to that You can just jump on and join the inner circle. I'm on there uh, a lot, Recently, I've been talking a lot about my flying because I'm working on getting my private pilot's license myself So I've been talking a lot about that putting some videos over on uh, my personal YouTube channel uh, To just having some fun with that. So we'll, we'll talk more. We've been talking about flying in the flying channel That's where you'll see me recently is in the flying channel but i hang out in hangout as well uh but yeah consider jumping on our discord and uh you can chat it up i'll be over there a little bit a little bit later and uh that's free that's where we chat and keep uh keep tabs on each other hang out make friends all right that's it i got nothing else nothing else for you so maybe i'll see some of you over in discord Thanks so much again for everybody that donated to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You guys are absolutely amazing. All right, that's going to do it for me. My name's Tori. This is Overlook Horizon. I'll see you guys next time. You're awesome. Goodbye. Have a good day.